right, before we start, I just wanted to say that uh, Start the Wave is at uh, Urbacon UK 19, and they're doing packages of kindness. Um, they're bringing together care parcels, deodorant, socks, toothbrushes for the homeless, partnering with Ace of Clubs in London. Um, how to get involved, you can find Marie twi on Twitter, Let's Care 19, or grab a piece of paper that's being handed out, write an uplifting message, and uh, they'll put it in the parcel. So let's all start the wave, okay? All right, just in case you're in the wrong panel, <laughs> just kidding. This is the Win Sadie's panel. I'm your moderator, Bonnie Farrar. For the past two seasons, we've been lucky enough to witness some extraordinary moments on screen by these two actresses. As Winona Earp and Mercedes Gardner, they've shown us that complicated can be beautiful, and our vulnerability and our truth are often where we find the most strength. Whenever they're on screen, they have a way of captivating us in a way that few artists can. They're always leaving us wanting more. Yet when they share a screen, that's when something truly amazing happens. The screen gets larger, the story gets bolder, and we become inspired to be a little braver. Off screen, these two women continue to inspire us all with love, kindness, and a whole lot of humor. So please help me welcome to Urbacon UK, Melanie Scrifano and Danny fucking Kind. soaking my foot in salt water and it's good. Oh, I'm also peeing. <laughs> and then I catch it and I sell it on the internet. No, that's what, the, it's a catch-all. Oh, 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 I got it. I'm peeing into the bowl. Right. So this is the Winsadies panel. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first question. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, where do you pee? I'm going to yeah. make you drink water. Because no. Drink. Yes. Boo. <laughs> I don't want no it. water, buddy? No, I'm good. Got my yeah, you can drink it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Danny. Yes. <laughs> um, no, from the from the moment Danny first came on screen uh, as Mercedes in season two, uh, you guys both just seem to have perfect comedic timing together. Um, have you guys worked together in the past, or did that just come naturally? We know each other from the past. Because we were in jail together. <laughs> how do we know each other? How did we? I don't know how we ever <gasps> met. Pure ownage. Oh my god! No, we didn't have any yes, scenes uh, together, though. We didn't but, have scenes together. Oh. We were in this show together, but we didn't ever act together. This is the first time we've ever... But I don't know how... I don't know. This isn't a great story. <laughs> yeah. But we know, like, we had a relationship before the show. Hi, yeah. Tell us more. <laughs> Just like for days. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like when I had my baby, Melanie came over and brought me food. Yeah. She's like, can you? I hung out with smells. me. I was really, I, I brought her food that I was, mine's louder than yours. Because it's fucking Oh, it's not on. <laughs> Nobody told me. God almighty. What were we talking about? Uh, that you brought me food when I... Why is it doing that? Um, I don't know. Every panel is this like... panel's a... fucked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I had a baby. Oh, yeah, because I was very concerned. Because, listen, because she had a baby first. Yeah. No. No. You had a baby. No, you had. A That's why you knew. To bring That's why I knew. Yeah. So I had a baby first, but I was like, "Oh, she's gonna be constipated." So, because <laughs> you're so scared to poop, because you're like, "It's gonna rip again. Everything's gonna come out." Which it did. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "I'm bringing her fiber." <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember what you brought. 
I don't you know, there were beans. You there came were beans. over, I think you held Jack, you brought me food. You were awesome. And then okay. we were in that acting class together, and then I didn't see you anymore, and then you were off and you booked this. And then I didn't see you until I got to set. Okay, well, I don't know. There's more to it than that. This is a very boring story. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's exciting. Well, the I constipation part was pretty fun. Riz, then, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Bonnie. <laughs> it's, it's what we expect. It's okay. <laughs> Honestly, that's why we're here. <laughs> um, so, one of my favorite when Sadie scenes was in season two uh, at Shorty's when you guys were just talking at the bar. And <laughs> I don't think it's too close. I, you think it's me? You think I'm radiating? Well, did it stop it when I moved it? You're right. <laughs> it's my boobs. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I did that. Sorry, back to you. So my questions are not going to be that exciting. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to know, that's one of my favorite scenes, but did you guys have a favorite scene? Which scene was it? Well, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Where Radio are we? Radioactive what? boobs. Yeah, I know, I know. I didn't all. hear you though. What was your scene? In the, one of the first scenes when you guys were at Shorty's together and you're talking about you're not human Tinder and you know. Oh yeah, and doing shots. And you're doing and shots. Patrick. And Patrick. Uh, I love that yeah. line, just don't slide off your stool. That was like such a fucking dirty good line. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, because of cum juices? Yes! Uh, oh, is it not? Thought. That's my interpretation I of it. I think you interpret a lot of things. Bad. <laughs> your own way. Right. Yes. There was another line like that where I was like, whoa, whoa. Dirty. Yeah. I would like that scene too. Yeah. And then you had a question afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to know if there was another scene that you thought that you loved filming together. Mm, I like the one. Well, I mean, they're all fun. But the one, just from an insider perspective, the one where we were at that construction site and you were freezing. That was the very first day on set. My I first know, day. And, and you I were so fields. confused. I had you were no like, idea. So what is my character? And I'm like, I don't know. Have fun. <laughs> and like also, she was, it was minus 40, like it was so cold. It was so cold. And um, I was pretending not to be pregnant, you were pretending not to be cold, <laughs> like it was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on. Yeah. And, and I just, I don't even remember what the scene was, but I remember this, shooting it. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. Yeah. That was my, I was nervous that day. I know, that's what, that's what I, it was so, so charming. I was very nervous. And I also felt like I was like, ugh, ugh, the whole time in those heels. Because of the ice? On the snow, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was insane. I liked the dinner, I liked shooting the dinner scene with yeah. Bolshar last year. Because it was so extravagant, like the set was so extravagant. And like, you had such a crazy day, like you had that big fight thing on the table. So mm -hmm. you were just like amped all day. Like, <laughs> it was just, you had so much to do and it was just fun. It was, it was fun to. One of the crew members brought her parrot. On your shoulder. Yeah. There was a parrot. It was just a crazy ass day. Yeah. It was a big long, I don't, like, I look at those days, I'm like, I don't even know how anything got done that day, because it was no. so much. Uh, that, I think that was my, I liked that. Doing that, that was also fun because there were so many other people in it. Like, sometimes yeah. when you're in a scene, just the two of you, there's a lot of pressure, because you're like, well, uh, better be good. <laughs> um, and, but then when there's so many other people, you feel like you share the burden. And like the energy's high on set because yeah. it's just like chaotic and like crazy. And those background performers were amazing. They were amazing. Yeah. They really and we kind of had back. this like secret little like conversation in the middle of the chaos. Yeah. That was fun. I like working with you. Me too. Uh, well, we like seeing you guys together on screen and hoping we can see more of you guys together in season four because uh, we do have a season four now. So. <laughs> To you guys. And, and yes, I'm going to say that every chance I get. Yes. We all had to fight pretty hard for that. Um, you, you mentioned being nervous. Uh, do you guys get nervous before when you go onto a new set for the oh first time? <laughs> We're like, am I going to get fired for sucking? Yeah. <laughs> every time. The table reads, like at the beginning, we do these table reads of the script in front of like the writers and the producers, and I find those really stressful. 
uh, and then first day is like going to high school all over first again. It's like there's time. like every department, like the camera department hangs out together and the wardrobe department. So everyone's kind of like, yeah, and yeah. like I, you don't, I don't know where to sit. You literally I, like, can I sit with you? It's yeah. the worst. I feel like such a loser every single time. Yeah. And I'm like, walk confidently, Danny, with your lunch tray. But I, inside, <laughs> I'm dying inside. Yeah. So nervous every time. It never changes, no. I don't think. No. Meryl well, Streep must feel like this. <laughs> yeah. No, she doesn't. She doesn't. <laughs> but it's also, yeah, you're just like, um, is the director going to be nice? Yeah. Like, you don't, like, we're really lucky on this show, as you probably know. Like, we have such a great crew. Like, people don't get hired if they're dicks or if they go away. Like, <laughs> it's like we have a very great crew yeah. um, and the directors. And so, like, then you, you know, you're sort of spoiled because then you go on to something else. And there's going to be someone who's going to not be as nice. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to, you're constantly going, who's that person going to be? And will I be able to handle it? Like it's, yeah, it's there's, they're shooting um, a, this other show called uh, Jan, which is like a Jan Arden's mm -hmm. show in Calgary. And they're shooting Ghostbusters in Calgary. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, because I have connections on both of those shows, a lot of people write me and tell me that they have Winona crew and mm -hmm. that they're so amazing mm -hmm. all the time. They're like, we got Benny or we got like, and then they. That's a lot of times we actually hold off, not even for actors schedules, but for our crew. Yeah. We're just like, all right, we want these people. Um, cause we know how much they contribute, like to I have goosebumps talking about them. I, <laughs> like I love them so much and we wait for those crew members cause we know what it takes to make our show and not everybody is willing to do it. And yeah. So. Do you find you get more nervous, uh, if everybody's on the same, like c coming into a new series or a new movie where everyone's new, or is it more nervous what you did coming into an established uh, series? I think if I have a lot on my shoulders, like I was really nervous about Working Moms because I was number two on the call sheet and because I had never done comedy before, so that was a whole different kind of nervous. Whereas like on this show, I know it's your show, I know I'm like a guest in your home, so I don't feel as nervous in that way, but I feel nervous and like, I really wanna do a good job because you guys have set up something so amazing. Hmm. That kind of nervous, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well you, you did. Do. Like, you, like, did you get, were you nervous going on the letter, Kenny? Or like, uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I was like, you, with Mercedes, I was like, who's this character? Like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. am I doing? That's so specific to your, what you play on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, so I'm just like, uh, when, it, yeah, no, it's true. When you're in somebody else's house, that's a good way of putting it, where you're just like, um, you're just like, all right, where do I put my shoes? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's that. Whereas if it's a, a new build, mm -hmm. you're all coming in together. It's on a new show or movie. It's a lot. Well, I mean, it's, it's scary in a different way, but yeah. But you're all building it together. Were you nervous during that movie that you just did? That movie looks fucking crazy. I can't wait to see it. Uh, me too. I haven't seen it either. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, no, because again, like the number one, Sam was incredible. Oh, good. Oh, amazing. And then the person I was nervous about was Andy McDowell, and she was. Um, she gave me incense for my trailer. I know, I've heard she's so nice. She's beyond, it's bananas. It's like Southern Charm she, though, right? Guys, if you looked in my DMs, you would see a <laughs> bunch from Andy McDowell. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't have to talk to me anymore. But she still does. She's just like, she isn't, she's like, oh, I, I'm an icon, but so are you, babe. Like, she's just so, so cool. Mm. We're all icons to Andy. <laughs> so Andy McDowell, Piper Paraboo, and Tessa Virtue oh. are all uh, apparently fans of you guys' work, you <laughs> know, and of, the sh of sometimes they are? the show. Piper Paraboo is an erper, yes. Yeah, she's a full-on erp. Full-on erper. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do you know that? Twitter. Really? <laughs> it's it's kind of what I do. <laughs> guys, uh, send her the thing. I didn't know that. That's so mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question was... Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, and, and Tessa is a huge fan of, of Melanie, so, uh, you guys met? like, no, BFF. Oh, yeah. I mean, you she, met her? No, she just seems fucking cool. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, was there anybody that you were, so, like, shocked to learn was a fan besides those two? Like, 
I, I, didn't, I don't know anybody that's fan. I don't know anything about anything. Oh, you know who I'm sh I was shocked? Uh, Obama. Oh my God, call me. <laughs> um, Murr from The Impractical Jokers. <laughs> That's what I go to sleep to. I just like put on Impractical Jokers and I listen to them pranking each other. Um, but he's a huge science fiction guy mm -hmm. and he's a big fan. And I, I was like, oh, you have good taste. Good for you. <laughs> good for you. I guess you watch me on television. <laughs> no, but you can tell a lot about a person by their sense of, like if they yeah. get our show, then I, I like you. Yeah. 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 That means she likes all of you guys. No, yeah, seriously. That's cool. <laughs> so uh, last night I was doing panel questions and I came across something on Twitter. So this is a last minute edition. But apparently Melanie just got named as one of the actresses who should be cast as She-Hulk. <laughs> so let's yeah. get that petition going. Um, so Danny, is there a special comic book hero or villain you would Ooh. like to be cast as? I would love to, I would love to play more villains. Yeah. I don't know if I could pull off the superhero. <gasps> I want you to play Green Ivy. I mean, Poison cool. Ivy. That'd be cool. <laughs> I want you to play Poison Ivy. That'd be cool. She's ultra sexy, though. I know. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to, like, triple down on the Spanx to get into that costume. Like, my, like, face would be blue. Were you wearing Spanx like, in that pink dress? So much Spanx. I was wearing so much Spanx in the red dress. I, like, couldn't pee all day because I was just, like, to get that thing off, Get those like, and then they rolled down. How many people to, did it take to put you in that dress? Uh, it wasn't too bad because it's like oh. scuba suit material. Yeah. So her pink dress and my red dress were the same material, so we had the same. It's like spongy. Yeah. It's like neoprene. I don't know what that is. It's like when you go scuba diving. <laughs> they were scuba dresses. Yeah. They were scuba dresses. Yeah. Yeah. I had to wear two spanxes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> under my scuba dress to make it. That's Look. the plural of Spanx. It's Spanxes. Spanxes. Yeah. Spanx, Spanxies. Spanx-eye? Spanx-eye. 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 Spanx Spanx <laughs> Thank you very much. I would rather play a villain because I would rather be like gritty and dirty. I have a very hard time uh, doing like the heels and the... Yeah, you are not a lady. I don't like that. <laughs> I like my version of that, but it's not Hollywood's version of it. And I would way rather I'm focus okay. on my work and be ugly. Ugly, then then um, be like glammy because I don't feel like I can focus on my work when I'm yeah in yeah those when you're constantly like I can't move because this hair will yeah and they and then the, the the production constantly stops you and they're just like can you just like fix your or like can makeup go in she's got like a whereas like when you're just like <laughs> they're just like just let her go <laughs> <laughs> she's at work you know yeah yeah, yeah. Um, all right so what personality trait of yours has gotten you into the most trouble in life? Oh. I feel like this is a good question for you. Me? No, I'm boring. Wait. Were you sure? You, I feel like you were a rascally little child. Though. No. Were you really? I was repressed. This is why I'm like this now. <laughs> because I was very like, okay, let's talk about our childhood. Because I was very like, um, I, I didn't want to disappoint my parents. Yes. Yeah. And I, Ottawa, like Same. very conservative. Yeah. We both grew up in Ottawa in this like very white suburban area. Mine wasn't white. Oh, mine was so vanilla, boring white. Oh no, mine was super, super diverse, which is cool, but still conservative. Yeah. So it's like I couldn't dress the way I wanted. I couldn't act the way I wanted. I was very repressed, which is why I'm like a, a little rascal volcano now. Volcano now. <laughs> Anything comes out. Um, what were you like? Same. I had parents that were cops. Could or... you say cunt at home? No. No. <laughs> no. Also, it was like that's why I went so far this way because yeah, I too. couldn't dress the way I wanted. I felt so uh, different than everybody yes. else. I felt like nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. Yeah. Nobody wanted. Nobody got my humor. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get out of Ottawa. Yeah. Is the point? No offense to my family who's still there. Hey. <laughs> okay. So what? What gets you into trouble? My real personality? Mm -hmm. Do you have an answer? I don't get into trouble because... 
She is trouble. Because, <laughs> yeah, because I lead with trouble, I don't get into trouble. And I learned that at, at like, I learned that in school, like when, when I could uh, say the shocking thing or be the shocking person, it kind of gives you a free pass in some kind of way. So I would like write my tests or whatever, and if I didn't know the answer, I would write something really sassy in the answer, and that would I know that would make the teacher laugh, so they would yes! be like, Yes! Oh, I got know. bonus marks for it. Me too, me too. <laughs> but like, we'll give you a half point for that, yes! you motherfucker. And I'm just like, yeah. You know, it's like that kind of shit. So I feel like I get away with a lot of shit. On set, I feel like that happens. Like in my job, that happens a lot. And in life, that happens. Mm -hmm. hmm. I should be in way more trouble than I get into. I think, you know, I think I get in trouble for, I want to make people happy and then I get fu fucked over because I'm just like, I'm more, so it's like, like somebody made a comment about my weight and I should have said something. I should have just been like, some, you know, go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself grandpa. Yeah. But, but instead I was like, oh. And I gave him a look, but I didn't actually say the words, don't ever talk about my body again. Yeah. Because I didn't want him to feel ill at ease. Mm -hmm. But then I left and I'm like, but, but now I feel ill. Mm -hmm. Like, so if somebody was gonna leave feeling like shit, it should have been that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I always let it be me. That's where I get in trouble. Yeah. It's bad, it's pretty yeah. common. Yeah, I'm sure. That's a hard lesson in this industry too. Yeah. I feel like that's a slow burn where like, you go, like that builds up over time until you're just like yeah. n enough, like yeah. no more. Of this. I'm actually better about it professionally than I am personally. Professionally, I'll lead with like, don't talk about my body, and if yeah. uh, you want me to lose weight, hire someone else. But then, um, in personal life, I guess I just don't want people to think I'm a bitch or something. Mm -hmm. So then I do things that I'm like, uh. Yeah. I feel I feel the same way. In uh, like I can advocate for my work, but yeah. I advocating for myself in life is harder. Yeah. And also, I could go to fucking town for anybody else. Yes. But like for myself, I'm just like, whew. Because people won't think you're a bitch for sticking up for someone. Yeah. But if you stick up for yourself, they'll think you're an asshole. Yeah. That's like similar to, I feel like, a real strength when I get to play characters, but like, interviewing me as a person makes me like makes my stomach hurt a little bit you know it's like because it's easier to just be somebody yeah or be a character like mm -hmm. there's so much room and so much like you can get away with anything when you're working mm -hmm. yeah we never get into trouble no basically <laughs> angels um if you guys want to we can open up the floor for a couple questions oh, if yay. you guys want to do that while you where's the microphone person She's on. um while they're queuing up, we'll, I'll ask you one more question. Uh, both Winona and Mercedes have complicated, not so perfect pasts. Let me just talk about the pressure to feel perfect and as a mm. child and things like that. Mm. And for me, that was, I was the same way, mm -hmm. shocker. Um, <laughs> so, but that was really fun to see. So why do you think it's important to portray women as still being vulnerable and beautiful and brave, even when they're not perfect by society's standards? Because it's just normal. It's like, <laughs> it's like who we are. Like, why wouldn't people write characters like that? It's beyond me. It's so really. tricky because I think a lot of times what people want is like, I think people want to make characters that are aspirational. But I think a lot of people mistake aspirational with perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, um, as a society, we've gotten into this, I don't know, I could be totally off base here. I have both my feet in salt water right now. Like, I'm at a spa. <laughs> I shouldn't be answering questions. But um, it's like we've decided that aspirational means one thing when actually it could mean something a lot more interesting. And I think it's, I think our show embraces, I think all these characters are aspirational, even, yeah. even though they're flawed. But it's because of, Who, yeah, I, I don't know. Both my feet are in water. <laughs> <laughs> I really did lose my train of thought because I'm like, I'm at ease. <laughs> and it is nice to be at ease in a room full of people. But it is, it is different, I think, because I think a lot of us are used to seeing women on screen, and, and you're right. 
and trying to be aspirational, it ends up looking like you have to be perfect yeah. or a certain type of woman or a certain type of mom or a certain type of individual. And uh, it's really nice to see your characters sort of not have a perfect past, not be perfect in the present at all, and yet still be uh, beautiful and vulnerable and brave and all the things that Quite frankly, we're used to seeing in male characters, and, and it's mm. about time we see it on our TV, too. And, but so. I think, too, like, and I don't think anybody, this is not a surprise, but Emily, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Like, from the day she was, like, from the day one where, where she's like, it's funnier if you don't know how to use your gun. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you know, here's a job playing a superhero. Like, go fuck up. Like, that's so much more interesting. That's all her, you know? Every, and, yeah. so, no, go ahead. I want you. Every, did you say you want me? You know what I said. <laughs> Every character on the show has like a push and pull. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. uh, it's the, it's so fluid on the show and it's never like hit over the head. I was saying yesterday that I've never gotten any flack for being like a villain on the show. No one's ever been like, fuck you. They've been like, ah, oh, this is what I love about the character, but yeah. it's totally Emily and how she writes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have? Fan question? Yes, okay. Does someone have the microphone? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Oh, this is, I see how it works. Hi. Uh, Hi. I was wondering what do you think is going to be in store for you guys for next season? What's going to happen? Yeah. What do you think, what do you want to happen for next season? A lot of like. <laughs> Ever since she got her face back, she's intolerable. She's so horny. <laughs> she's just horny all the time. <laughs> Do you have ideas? What did you say yesterday if this came up? I said that we make out. Oh, but I also, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can't be your answer for everything. I'm sorry. Um, I also said that like, I would really like to see, because we talk about them being friends, like they have such a, they, they say it's, a, it's been said that they're friends, but I think that they were just both ostracized in high school for being, uh, for saying what they wanted as women. Yeah. So I would love to see like what it actually looks like when they hang out, mm. when they're not with other people. Fighting demons. Yeah, like what is a, just like a slice of life moment look like between these two characters? Okay. And how those women find each other, because they do connect, there's some thread that connects them. They're yeah. just very different women. Yeah. And I feel like that happens in life all the time where it's like I'm hanging out with somebody that's so fucking different from me, but I'm just like, oh, you're great, you know? Yeah. I feel like that could happen. Like, okay, so in this scene where nothing's happening, what, we're naked. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Spanx for naked. No, I know. <laughs> I don't want to eat egg whites. <laughs> I just don't want to. Um, okay, so we're, so, so it's like basically a Seinfeld episode? That yeah, exactly. Nothing, nothing, happens. nothing happens? Okay. Nothing happens. I don't see that happening. I know, it's not, it's too boring. No, it's not. We could do like a digital, we could do like a, you know, the, the, what are those things when they do for the internet? <laughs> like a show does like a little internet part. Nobody knows what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know how like... Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> digital, digital... Yeah, digital episode. We'll do a digital episode where we're just like watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> Winona and Mercedes are like, oh, oh my god, that's amazing. We should do that. Okay. We should like do it in our trailer. We'll just sit in our costume one day and just like shoot a, a bullshit episode. Well, we're doing it. And post it on Twitter. I'm not paying you, but we're doing it. Okay. Great. We'll do that. We'll do that. We would all. Did you say sex? We would all watch that. No, you just said yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> See what I've done? <laughs> yeah. There's a question in the front row. You're running. Thank you for running. Hello. Oh, you're Hi. great. Oh, no, they don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go. Oh, it's me. Yeah. Hi. Um, so if you had to pick a new name for yourself, what would it be? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's context. For our characters or for ourselves? No, for yourself. Whoa. In real life? In real life. I'd like to be like Frank or Johnny or like, yeah. I already have like a boyish name, whatever, but I would like to just like roll with that. I like Frankie for you. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. 
You're um, such a Melanie in my head. I ew. Uh, okay. It's just, that's the wow. worst thing you've ever said to me. In my brain. What do you see yourself as? Anything else. Um, uh, well, it's funny because I was, I hate my name so much that I was talking to Jeremy from Sci-Fi and I was like, eh, is it too late to change my name? <laughs> and she's like, well, what do you want to change it to? Okay, hear me out. Because my husband calls me Melly and I don't hate that. Melly? Melly. Yeah, he gives everyone nicknames and he also calls me <laughs> Honey Bunches of Oats. Cute. <laughs> He's anyway. very sweet. <laughs> um... Anyway, and then my mom's last name is Laroche, and so I like stone, and then we came, across, we came up with Melly Stone. I don't know, it's not great, but then but you're you, still I, Melanie. No, I'm not a Melly. Melly Stone? It's the, Ani it's the Melanie, it's just it's like a stripper name. Melly Stone. <laughs> Melly Stone. You are a bad person right now. <laughs> Fuck, no wonder you're cast as a villain. <laughs> I reserve the right to change my name to something else. So I have a, an official and an unofficial question. Okay. Um, you're both in horror movies at the moment. Um, what's your favorite genre to film? Mm. And my unofficial question is, I'm following you on stage on Sunday. Danny, any tips? You're following me on stage? Are you doing the mental health panel? Oh, I want to. What does that mean? You're going after I'm up? She'll be up here. Oh, uh, any tips? You have to turn on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on. What was the first question? We're both in horror films. Oh, yeah. What's our favorite genre? <sighs> Is, is weird a genre? <laughs> yeah, I know. I like weird. My favorite movie of all time is Cafe de Flore. It's the most incredible film I've ever seen in my life. Is it a film or is it a... It's a film. Fucking movie. It's a film, right? Um, it's like nothing compares to that. And I don't know what, gen what genre is that. Brilliant. Yeah, it's weird. It's dramatic. It makes you think like a I still, I've seen it so many times. I still can't stop thinking about it. It like hits me on a level that I'm not even sure I'm conscious of, but I, I it speaks to humanity and like it's, I don't know what genre that is. Drama? Have you seen it? No. Oh my God. Okay. Invite me over. In the trailer, that's Invite what we'll do. Over. You're Mercedes never home. You're like, I'm watching. on set. You're on everybody's set all the time. You're shooting currently. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, let's do something. I'm unemployed. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, we're fighting about working. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. It's a hard answer because anytime you do too much of one thing, you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but uh, wait, to shoot or to watch? Oh. To oh, to shoot. I thought you meant to watch. Like, what do I like to watch? To shoot. Well, isn't that the same answer? Wouldn't you want to just shoot what you watch? Like, no. no. What's, sorry, you answer, okay. I'll think. I like weird, intelligent comedies. Like, I like, I like Letterkenny because it's subversive, but it's, it's like, if you're not paying a lot of attention, it sort of works for like, for, I don't want to be mean. Like <laughs> for dum dums, for for yeah, like small minded dum dums. Yeah. yeah, it really but works. But then also it's like. But then if you're paying attention, you're like, smart. I'm making fun of you, asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but don't tell the dum dums I said that. Oh, fuck it, tell them they won't know. <laughs> um, but then uh, you know, yeah. So funny thing, I, I think it's a, a very powerful way to make a statement is to use humor. I don't like being preached at, I don't like being, but I think making your point through humor can be very effective, but it's also fun, it's fun to laugh, so yeah, I'd say like weird, smart comedies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I like shooting, I think I also, I got hired a lot for a long time as like the girl who just got raped and like oh, really yeah. like heavy drama, which I love and can do and it's really cathartic and like amazing because you never know what's going to happen when you shoot those scenes. like. 
I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's in me. And then, yeah. and then whatever comes out is like, oh, oh shit, you know? But then when you do a comedy, it's just a different, such a different muscle that I like. But it's that same like excitement of not knowing. You're like, yeah. is this joke gonna work? Yeah. I, I don't, it's either gonna really work or really not. Yeah. Which is also, it's sort of like, can I cry today? I don't know, let's find out. No idea. Can I be funny today? I don't know, let's find out. It's that same fear, I think. That but this, being on a set that it's a comedy is a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Like more, because people, I think on a drama or something that's heavier, uh, I, I think a good set will hold space for you for whatever you're shooting and sort of like leave you alone a little bit. But on a comedy, it's just like, as soon as they call cut, you're like, fuck you, man. And then it's yeah. just like fun. It's so yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, we're about no, done, no, but I know. What? Um, no, I know. It's uh, yeah. um, no. Melanie, you and, and Emily have, have said before in multiple panels that you, you didn't know when you were filming that first season if anyone would get, get what you were doing yeah. and get the jokes and get the humor. And I'm pretty sure sitting here today, you guys know full well we all get it and we love it. And thank you guys so much for sharing so much of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And thanks for being the type of people who get it. You're our people. Melanie Scrifano and Danny fucking Kai!